right, hello and welcome to the let's see, let me show you that, the Books to Kids Learning Initiative webinar, a first book OMG Books Award project, and you'll learn more about that in a second. Um, I am Krista Porter. I'm the Library Development Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission. With me is Sally Snyder, our coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't even cheat. And um, <laughs> remotely with us is Bonnie Best. Good morning, Bonnie. Afternoon. Good sorry. Good afternoon. It's been a week. Um, and she is with First Book, the organization um, that's going to be talking to us about this. Uh, so, so some of you uh, have hopefully heard of the reason you're here. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission was awarded a grant from the First Book organization. Uh, to offer um, uh, free book credits to schools, libraries, other eligible organizations across the state of Nebraska to get e free books and ebooks. And we are going to learn today more about that and how it all works and what this is all about. So um, I'm, we're just going to actually hand right over to um, Bonnie to tell us everything we need to know. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Krista. Um, and thank you all, actually, for joining today. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got um, several slides to go through just so that you all have a chance to learn a little bit more about First Book, about our organization, um, about how to participate, and then also about this OMG Books Award. Um, just quickly, I just want to make sure you all can see my screen. I believe that everything is clear there, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead yep, and advance. Yep. I see your slides full screen, no problem. Wonderful. Okay. Let me go ahead and, um, well, it doesn't want to click down for me. Let's see. Sometimes you have to click off of your GoToWebinar interface onto the slides again to. Uh, yeah, to get it to happen. There you go. You were right. Yep. Um, thank you. So just really quickly, again, my name is Bonnie Bestie. I'm a nonprofit partner development manager here with First Book. Um, I've been here a little over a year, have a background in education, early childhood education specifically, um, and I'm really excited to now be a part of the First Book team. Um, and I'm going to go through an awful lot of what First Book does as an organization, the history, um, and talk to you all a little bit about how you will get to be involved, hopefully not only through this opportunity, but on an ongoing basis through membership and potentially even partnership activities. So um, I've got the, a slide at the very end that provides my contact information as well as the contact information for our member services team, um, which I'm going to talk a little bit about through these slides. So you will have that um, in case you need to reach out to anybody directly following this presentation. And I think Krista already said it at the beginning, but if you've got questions as you're going along, you can certainly write them down and then we can go through them at the end or um, ask questions at the end. So here's our agenda. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit first, just kind of give you a first book overview, who the organization is, talk about our member network, um, and talk about some of our nonprofit partners. Um, and then I really want to launch into talking to you most specifically about how we're going to engage with you all through this OMG Books Award. Um, and there are a lot of different aspects about um, how we're going to engage through this and it'll talk through um, that way how to access our marketplace and what you're looking for um, on the marketplace, how to register with First Book, um, talking about some of the reporting aspects that will be um, hopefully leaning from you throughout the process so we can really measure the impact of this award um, and talk through some aspects also about ongoing partnership um, if there might be opportunities for that um, as, we, um, as we go through this process. So just so you all have the background, First Book was co-founded about 25 years ago by our current CEO, Kyle Zimmer. Um, it was started as a way to really address the reality that many kids are growing up without access to books, whether it's in their homes or their communities. And we know that access to these to this quality education is, is not equal. So <clears throat> with these huge disparities between resources that are available to the kids growing up in poverty and then their more affluent peers, um, Kyle really identified a need um, in that area. 
Um, and while we're focused on literacy since its inception, First Book has also been committed to educational equity. So we're really looking to provide equal access to a quality education by making books and other resources available to the classrooms and programs that are out there who are serving kids in need all the way up from birth to age 18 um, and to try to remove those barriers that we see um, to really receiving a quality education. So this is kind of the first book member network um, in a nutshell. And really, as you can see here, our power as a social enterprise is in our ability to aggregate the collective strength of what was formerly a fragmented group. So the first book network consists of educators, providers, and programs who are exclusively working in under-resourced communities serving kids in need. <clears throat> and if you sign up for the first book, signing up is free. And one, <clears throat> once an educator has self-validated and signed up to be a member and verified that they're eligible to become a member of the network, then they're instantly connected to our ongoing supply of free and low-cost resources. Um, in sourcing our titles and our resources, this network that I'm talking about here, well, we rely on it heavily in the feedback loop that we generate um, with these members. So what one of the things that we're doing is reaching out to you through emails, through surveys, through all kinds of research opportunities to ask and to seek feedback from our member network about what the issues are that are um, really top of mind and that they're facing, what kinds of needs they're seeing in their community so that we can actually take that real-time information to curate resources and identify and create resources that are going to best meet those needs. <clears throat> and as you can see, you know, we, we're really trying to, um, it's important for us to have a, um, a very diverse network. So while we are, you know, primarily educators and our network that's over 450,000, as you can see here, um, and we are growing at a rate of almost a thousand new members a week, which is fantastic. Um, again, these are individuals that are exclusively serving children in need. So it's a, a, um, and a very respondent um, group of individuals. So it's helpful for us to kind of, you know, build that up to know that we are serving other providers as well and not just educators. So obviously we want to hit the libraries because those are individuals that are working closely with the schools and the children and families, early childhood programs, Head Start programs, um, you know, out of school time, after school networks, all of those are eligible to be members of First Book and to receive access to those resources that we're talking about. This is just a real quick snapshot of some of our nonprofit partners. But as you can see, we help our partners by, you know, by both keeping the costs as low as possible and managing the logistics for some of their large scale resource distributions. But we also work closely with some organizations just as integrated thought partners, collaborating and sharing leadership on special projects and initiatives and helping to support the resources that we create through our free resources section on the marketplace, which I'll point out a little bit later on the slide. So what we're really here to talk about and what we want to make sure we're focused on and we um, ensure all the information about is this OMG Books Award, um, <clears throat> which is really exciting. As uh, Kristen mentioned, the Nebraska Library Commission was one of our awardees in Nebraska. We were able to get um, $28,000 to be able to distribute um, to your various partners in the state. Um, so basically, just so you have a little bit of background about the OMG Books Award, it really was a rare opportunity for First Book to be able to have to distribute this funding. Um, it was funding that came to us to be able to distribute in 33 states. And the way that we went about doing it was a competitive RFP process that we put out um, to through our network and then through additional outreach channels to ask folks to tell us the story um, about what was going on in their community and how having access to book credits and, um, and books and ebooks would really help infuse um, sort of new life into their programs and be able to help lift up these stories about children that don't have access to um, the resources that we want them to have. So um, it, we had about $4.7 million. This we're actually in cycle three. We ran it in three different cycles um, to break up the states into different groups so that we were really able to manage that process and make sure that we were capturing the impact. Um, and we and we estimate that we're going to get out about a hundred about excuse me about 1.5 million books 
um, into these different 33 states. So, um, so it's a really, really big initiative for us and a unique way for us to be able to interface with our members and our nonprofit partners, because normally we're not the ones that are, are generating the funding. So this has been um, a really exciting opportunity for us, not only to be able to um, work with nonprofit partners in a different way, but also for us to be able to really think about how we're going to, to scale um, and understand the, um, the need that's out there and how we can continue to grow our partnership so that we can meet that need. So this is a slide, I think you guys all got to see this on the um, first page, but um, the Nebraska Library Commission has created this wonderful little logo as well as a, um, um, a website page, which I believe is where folks go then to identify if they are um, interested in participating in this award. Um, so one of the reasons that you know we were excited about this application was because we saw how um, how broadly it was going to be distributing the funds throughout your state and how connected it was going to make the, the various organizations. Um, so thinking about the Head Start organizations and the Title I schools and youth rehabilitation centers um, was really exciting to us to be able to connect with them um, on a different way and to help them understand uh, the importance of being a part of the First Book Network. Yep, yep, that's correct. We have a, a website that I'm sure you'll see later if you guys haven't already seen the link. And that logo is uh, thanks to, we just want to say thanks to Tessa Terry, who's our uh, communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. She came up with that for us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so these were the these are the three primary goals of the OMG Books Initiative. So I just kind of want to go through these and talk to you all a little bit about what we were what we were looking for, why we were excited about um, choosing the Library Commission for this award, and um, and then you know talk to you about how you can be involved in it through the process. Um, so the first one, as you see, obviously, is to register and activate thousands of educators and providers who are working in these under resourced communities. So what we were really hoping to do through this initiative is to expand our reach to more educators who are working in the lives of children by registering and activating them in our network. So what this does is ensure, as I was talking about earlier, ensure that more educators and providers are connected with access to our resources, but also that they can add their voice to the movement. So, and that will go well beyond this initiative. <clears throat> The second goal that we had, obviously, was to get 1.5 million relevant, high quality, brand new books and ebooks into the hands of kids in need. So we know, you know, from all of the research that um, books and ebooks are really valuable, essential resources for creating equitable education experiences for all children. Um, so what we are anticipating is that distributing these books to programs serving children and youth. As a result of this, we're going to be asking for um, feedback from you about how these resources have made a difference for the children and the families that you serve. Our collective power here is in sharing these inspiring stories as a way for all of us to continue spreading best practices and innovative approaches um, and to continue generating support on an ongoing basis. And then the third one was to create is to create a multiplier effect by engaging stakeholders to join these efforts and amplify this impact. We know that obviously you engage with stakeholders, a number of different kinds of stakeholders on a regular basis, boards of directors, community supporters, families, teachers aides, et cetera. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that we were thinking through ways about how to engage them as we think about um, how we're using these resources. So the first one, as you saw, obviously, is register and activate. So the, um, there's just a few things here that just kind of give you some of the, the research and the, you know, the infographics that we use um, that are helpful to tell the story. Um, so teachers and care providers, we know, obviously, you all are on the front lines every day. And the First Book Network is providing a, a resource not only for access to books and supplies, but also to provide valuable input to us, as well as get feedback about what types of supports and tools are needed um, to give children the opportunities to succeed. So our research and insights department is constantly collecting and analyzing feedback and data from our network to inform resource development tools that are aimed at offering 
these relevant reinforcements for educators so that they're armed with the latest techniques around things like supporting at-risk children or supporting social and emotional health, um, teaching and learning that is inclusive and culturally relevant. Uh, we hear through the surveys and you know, from the feedback from our educators that these are the things that matter most to them. And so it's important to us to be able to curate books and create resources that are going to address those needs um, for our educators. That's why we're so excited about this OMG Books opportunity because it's opening up um, avenues to a lot of folks that may not have known all about First Book or may have known just a little bit about First Book but not known all of the things that we make available to folks. All right, so talking about registration, um, anyone who is an individual working with children in, in need, and we define that need as um, serving 70% or greater um, population from poverty. If you're working in a Title I or a Title I eligible school, you're automatically um, qualified to be a, a registered member of First Book. Um, there are a few auto qualifiers that when you go on to do the registration process, you'll find um, if you are an FQHC, a federally qualified health healthcare center, if you are Title I, Title I eligible school, if you are um, a library with an E-rate of 90, and even if you don't know what your E-rate is, and I believe Krista, you and I had talked about this, that you have some of that data, but um, likely what you can do is connect with our member services team who will be able to ask you additional questions to make sure that we can verify eligibility. But one of the reasons that we do this, just to say, is because you know, it, it's part of us being good stewards of our relationships that we've built with our publishing partners. So we get donated and, and um, greatly reduced cost inventory that we make available to this network with the guarantee that it's going exclusively to these children who would not otherwise have access. So that's the reason when we go through the registration process, um, we do ask for you to verify eligibility. Um, and the way that we, you know, the way that you can do it, just so you know, it's um, we encourage everybody um, within an organization to register. So it's the, the more the better, because what will often happen is we will have um, funding opportunities or interesting information that's being put out, um, whether it's surveys or results from surveys that gets shared with folks. Um, so it, rather than having just one point person at an organization, we encourage everybody at that organization to be a member, especially if there are funding opportunities, that's even more funding that's able to go into your organization. And that is oftentimes supported by our corporate sponsors. So we have a good deal of corporate sponsors that work with First Book, including Pizza Hut and Disney and KPMG um, that will, um, on occasion, sometimes regionally, sometimes nationally, sometimes depending upon a specific initiative, um, want to push out funding into our network to say, we'd like to give you $25 off your next order to um, on books that support social emotional learning, because that's an initiative that, that they're, um, that, that they want to to back. So, um, so those kinds of things will often come your way, which is why we encourage everybody to register. So you can see the um, addresses right here on this slide. You just need to go to firstbook.org backslash join. It's a relatively straightforward process. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes, especially if you're somebody that has an auto qualifier to, be, to verify eligibility. Um, <clears throat> it'll ask a little bit of demographic information, um, ask you about the children that you serve, um, and then once you complete the process, you are immediately a member and you will begin receiving emails and updates and information from the First Book Network. So the second goal obviously is books to kids. Um, so in addition to boosting our membership, which is um, really important, we're also focused on how member and partner organizations are gonna get even more of these resources into their underserved communities. So, as we talked about already, the Nebraska Library's Book to Kids program is focused on um, sharing out gift credits to purchase relevant books to statewide Head Start centers, Title I schools, libraries, and youth rehabilitation centers. Um, jump in, Krista, if I'm missing anybody. Um, Native American community 
Well, we have, we have a couple, a few libraries that are also on our um, Native American um, reservations too, that are public wonderful. libraries and Head Starts there. Yeah, wonderful. And some Head Starts there too. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. So this is just a snapshot, a quick look at the um, at the first book marketplace. Um, and for those of you that you know want to kind of look at it on yours, it's just fbmarketplace.org. Until you are a registered member, you won't really be able to to unlock everything that you see on here because you need to be a member to be able to actually put things into your into your cart and to see the inventory in real time. Um, but you can get a sense of the marketplace by just going to that that web address and taking a look at some of the things. We um, we pride ourselves on having the largest selection of culturally relevant, brand new, high quality books at, um, at low cost that we're able to offer um, to folks, most of them over 50% um, off. And we also have, as you'll see circled right here on this slide, that little section on the blue tab, which is called the book bank. That's the section of our marketplace for donated inventory. Um, it is entirely carton quantity, um, although they may be making some changes to that at, at a future date, but right now we'll, we'll go with it as entirely carton quantity. Um, and this is inventory that's donated to us from our publishing partners. Um, so it is completely free to members. The only cost is for shipping and handling. So that's oftentimes a good place for folks who might be looking for a large quantity of books for a, a distribution or looking for a large number of um, titles at a, at a very, very low price because they want every child in their book in their class to receive the same book um, or that kind of thing. So the book bank is a good place for that. But we have a lot of um, ways for you to search the marketplace, which is nice. You can search by genre, you can search by age group, um, and they make it really, really easy to be able to see what's available at any given moment in time. Um, because as I said, if you're a registered member and you're logged on, then you can click on a title and it will tell you how many copies of that are available at that moment in time. This is just another um, you know, kind of snapshot of some of the things that you'll see. Um, and there's a couple of little tabs down here that are important that you'll note, again, once you become a member that you can get text updates about things that are um, that are new and, and might be relevant on the book bank. Um, those can come directly to your phone. Um, and we also have a, a two dollars and under section. Um, so there are a couple of different ways to um, to really, really be able to get uh, high quantity of books that are high quality, but at a, at a low low price. This is our a snapshot of our um, stories for all section, um, and this was created. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get the year right, um, but it was it was a while back, basically in reference to um, making sure that we w really had um, culturally relevant titles, so that when teachers heard from their classes that they were that their children were not seeing characters in the books that reflected them or um, experiences or were not being able to read about experiences that reflective of their life. We really wanted to try to broaden that out because we know oftentimes a lot of um, you know low cost resources don't necessarily come with that culturally relevant um, tag because the two don't necessarily go hand in hand. So this is our stories for all section and um, and like I said, you know, we pride ourselves on having the, the largest collection of um, really, really relevant, culturally relevant books um, for kids. So I encourage you to go on there and, um, and take a look through those. And then the last goal um, is engaging stakeholders. Um, and we talked a little bit about this in the introduction. These are just a few examples that you see that are that are written down here. These might not necessarily be, you know, the perfect examples um, for your organization, but there are a lot of ways to think about how to engage parents or to engage, you know, district-wide um, reading initiatives or um, public officials, um, community foundations into this work. So, you know, sharing out the news that we've got this award, it's because we're so dedicated to serving children in need. And that will help, you know, foundations and community organizations, United Ways and Chambers of Commerce and those kinds of things, you know, also jump on board. Sometimes they might even be able to lend multiplier funding to get more resources. Um, so I think there are a lot of ways to think about how to engage stakeholders. We have shared a media toolkit, I know, with 
um, you, Sally and Krista, um, to let you all know how to share it as an organization. And they've they've put out a press release, which is fantastic. All of those things are really great. And the other thing that we we want to do is we want to be able to hear from you all as the individuals who are going to be receiving these credits and getting these books and infusing them into your communities. Um, you know, we love to see pictures and hear stories and videos of how these books are being used and the impact that they're having in your community. All of those things, you know, we can push out on our social media um, and they continue to help tell the story for individuals and potential funders that are out there who, who might want to um, support this work on an ongoing basis. So we talked a little bit in the beginning about reporting. Um, so there's not a, a formal report mechanism that we're going to be looking for at the end other than a post survey. So um, the, you all received a pre-survey which asked several questions to sort of get a landscape analysis of you know, what does it look like now? Who's gonna be receiving these awards? Where's the greatest need? That kind of thing. And then what we're also going to do is send out a post survey, which will go um, to you as the organization. And there will also be a link for you to send out to anybody that receives gift credits as a part of this award so that they can then share with us the data about their specific community, how many books they got, um, how many children it was able to impact um, and really help us tell that story. Um, so that's one of the ways that we're we're going to do that but as I mentioned you know in the, in the last slide we love to hear additional stories and additional ways to be able to um, to promote this and promote the amazing work that you guys are doing um, so <clears throat> I think that's that on that one I talked a little bit in the beginning, um, I think, as you'll recall, about ongoing partnerships. So as I mentioned, you know, my role is as a manager with our nonprofit partners. Um, so the work that I do is not necessarily directly with individual educators, but I connect with the nonprofit organizations that then support those educators and help involve them um, and get them um, all the knowledge and the information about being involved um, with First Book. So I think that um, it's great for us to think about all the connections that we're going to be making now within your state so we can think about how to continue ongoing partnership. And, and as I mentioned before, um, there are going to be so many great stories for us to tell now. I think that there will be ways for us to connect with, whether it's community foundations. Um, or other partners that may have program funding um, and that kind of thing to talk through ways that they might want to be involved um, with First Book. In addition to all of the amazing um, books that you will see on the First Book Marketplace, what we didn't talk about is that we also have a lot of non-book resources as a part of our First Book Marketplace. Um, just to say aloud right now, as a part of this grant, um, because of the way this funding came to us, which was part of a class action settlement that had nothing to do with First Book, um, but there are parameters around how the money can be spent. So this funding is strictly for books and eBooks only. Um, but beyond this opportunity and you know, throughout ongoing partnership or your involvement with um, First Book Beyond, there are lots of resources that are available through the First Book Network from clothing and coats um, for kids because you know we want to be able to address the issues of chronic absenteeism and one of the things that we know from the research is that there are lots of reasons that kids don't come to school um, and some of them are because they just don't have um, the other things that they need like coats at their standing at the bus stop and that sort of thing um, so we make all of those things basic needs items educational resources um, teacher resources, um, outdoor play activities, so um, STEM activities. There are lots of things that you'll um, that you'll find as you explore the um, the first book marketplace. The other thing that we do um, is that we have what we call um, an accelerator program, and the reason we call it that is because um, we understand that um, the best in class research is not always reaching. The people that it needs to reach in the timeliest way that it can. So oftentimes we have amazing research that's supporting things around children suffering from trauma or children's social emotional needs, but it's not reaching the educators who are the boots on the ground working with these individuals. 
So this, pro, this accelerator program that we have developed basically takes that best-in-class research and puts it into a digestible format, works with these leaders and, and experts to create resources so that we can push it out to our entire network completely free. Um, these are usually funded opportunities from other organizations and, um, and, and push that information out so that teachers have it in a, in a timely fashion. Um, one great example, if you're on the First Book Marketplace and you're doing a little bit of exploring around under our free resources section, you'll see lots of parent tip sheets that go along with books, um, which are which are wonderful and created with some of our expert partners. Um, you'll also see toolkits, and one of our most popular is the Trauma Toolkit. Um, and this was created in collaboration with CASEL, which is the Center for Collaborative for Academic, uh, I'm not gonna get it right, Social Emotional Learning, I know is what the SEL is, but um, at any rate, they, they helped us um, to build this resource that then teachers are able to use on a regular basis with students in their classroom to help them um, understand the situations that they're facing if they might be suffering from um, chronic stress or trauma um, and have tools and tips for, for how to work with them on that. So um, there are lots of things that, that we can think through from an ongoing partnership perspective, whether it's creating resources or putting people in touch with other organizations or using our research and insights team to help do, you know, landscape analyses to find out what's what's needed where um, so that we can get new resources. Um, there are lots of ways that we that we think about doing that with our nonprofit partners. Just a few important dates to remember. So um, the grant period was a, a six month period. Um, and so the spend down needs to be completed. I mean, really it needs to be completed by the end of March, but we put March 15th because our ideal goal is that these books will all be distributed. So not just purchased by the end of March, but also in the hands of kids by the end of, by the end of March. Um, so, uh, and the way the gift credits work is that um, you're obviously going to reach out to um, through the website to the Nebraska Library Commission to find out their process for amounts and how they're distributing that to various organizations. And the way it will come to you is in the form of a gift certificate. And that gift certificate is a unique number that you can just um, copy and paste, plug in on the website when you go to check out, and it will um, take off the amount immediately from your order right then and there. So that's the way the gift credits work. <clears throat> Keeping in mind, as I said before, of course, it's only um, only eligible for books and ebooks. Um, so April 10th is when that we will be sending out that link for the um, post award survey um, to both the organization and then you can send it out to any of your stakeholders. Um, and then we would look for hopefully two weeks later to have um, those surveys completed and back to us. Um, and then of course on an ongoing basis, as I mentioned, we love to hear the stories about how children are getting um, getting books and we definitely love to see pictures and videos as well. So, so, this so Bonnie, I do have a question yeah. about that, the, the deadlines, the dates there. Oh, yeah. So on the gift credits then like uh, after, like as of March 15th or after the end of the day, is that when like the, the gift certificates expire? and they won't be able so, to use them after that date? It's a good question, yeah. And we that's the day that we put um, for, for expiration. So I'm okay. going to be in contact with you up until that point in time. I will be able to share um, reports of sort of how spend down is going and, and where mm -hmm. they haven't been able to be spend down. So you can do a little bit of outreach from your end to say, hey, remember, you've got this gift um, and that kind of thing. So we want to make sure that you're going to be able to expend every single dollar and that it's going to go into your state because that was the goal for this initiative. Um, but uh, they won't, there's not going to be a hard stop. In mm -hmm. other words, you know, at March 15th, they won't, it's not going to com completely turn off from them. But you and I will be in contact and there will be a point in time when there will be a hard stop. So um, just to say that, you know, we'll keep that in conversation. Yeah, so we'll put that as like, yeah, for now, try and get get everything done by then, everybody at least ordering things so that then by the end of March, everything's gotten been shipped to all the, all the locations. Yep, and distributed so that it's in the hands of kids. Yep. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good question. 
Um, so yeah, so just to put this up here, this is my information. I also put the help at firstbook.org. Um, That's going to be your best resource if you're having questions or need any help troubleshooting as you're going through the registration process. Our member services team is remarkable. It is um, live individuals. These are not, this is not a, you know, sort of your standard help desk and you don't know where um, somebody is. They're right here in our building. Um, they're all our staff. At not helping folks navigate the registration process as well as any problems that you might be having with ordering um, etc so that's your first stop for all of those questions. so yeah that's that's it for my part um i know we went through pretty quickly and at a pretty high level i'm happy to answer any questions no problem all right, yeah, so if anyone does have any questions uh type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface um I'm monitoring that here or um, raise your hand and I can unmute your microphone. You can ask your question that way. Um, do we have anything, Sally, that we were wondering about? Or I know we've had we've had some contacts from some libraries who have already reached out about have already signed up for doing this, which is great. Yeah. Um, I, I did have one question about um, special collections or I don't know what to call it. You had said before briefly that a a library could have books on, I'm going to say on display, that's not quite what I mean, but like a special set of books that could be helpful to children, perhaps like children in trauma or something that would be in their collection but would be available for children of the community to use um, and for teachers and, and um, other people to, parents and other people to come by and find for them. Is that something that would work with this program? Am I saying so that right? If I think, yeah, if I think I'm understanding your question correctly, I'll try to answer it and then if not, let me know. But um, it sounds to me like what you're talking about are some of the um, genre type um, ways that we have the first book marketplace set up. So if folks are looking to create some kind of a set around social emotional learning or books that deal with you know with trauma um, it it's actually on our marketplace so you can actually search that way um, our story the the slide that I did I'll try to find it um, the slide that I showed right here this is what we call our stories for all section and you'll find that as one of the genres on the um, the marketplace that you can search by. This is where you're going to find a lot of those titles um, that um, that may deal with some of those issues. So you can you could build your own collection um, from shopping on the marketplace because the way you're dividing up your award, um, if you're doing it through gift credits, that means that those credits are really are only available through the marketplace. So we we do do something called a special order. Um, mm -hmm. And just to kind of give you a quick high level about what that is, special orders can be done through um, through our curation team. If you're interested in um, either titles that you already have identified or titles that you just want researched that might have to do with a, a certain topic or um, or age group, et cetera, um, we can give out those parameters to our folks and then they can do a search and create a large special order, which might not be inventory that's on our marketplace, but that we would order direct from the publisher. But those kinds of special orders usually are, I mean, they are definitely much larger. They're larger than sort of the individual credits that um, that we'll be giving out. So they have to be a minimum of 100 books per title and a minimum of 500 books total. So those are really sort of larger organizations do those organization-wide to distribute out um, a set of books that way. So I think what you are talking about, probably the best way for an organization to build a, a a kit or a set around a specific talk of topic would be to search by genre on the marketplace um, and build it up and order it that way. And so then a public library who are um, members could have could use their gift credits to get those particular titles that they would find there into their collection so that the library collect the public library collection so that they would be available for children and families of the community. Is that what I'm understanding? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I yeah. feel better now, but I understand. <laughs> Perfect, yes. Okay, All right. we have some questions. Oh, oh Joy, I see, okay. <laughs> One question is a moot question. Um, let's see what we have. 
I can't see them, so I'll let you read yeah, them. Yeah, I'm reading through this one here to see that I get most of my kids learn from this. Okay. Um, the question we have here is how do we show that we are partnering with a Title I school? We are not, this is a public library, we are not uh -huh. eligible based on the library's E rate account. Um, mm -hmm. our E-rate uh, uh, percentage, but the public school that um, the kids come into the library for is a Title I, and there's also two Head Start programs in the public school. So really everyone coming into the library that are from the school, those kids via right. the school connection are eligible. So how do they indicate that when they're doing um, their sign up? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. And again, not having the full registration page in front of me, it's hard for me to remember sort of, you know, what you what you need to click. But there is a way to indicate if you have if you have a program within your organization that is exclusively serving children either from Title One or Head Start or you know children in need that meet that criteria. Um, mm. There's a way to identify if you have a program. Um, I can't again. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how you do that but um, if it doesn't seem logical to you as you go through the process reach out to that help at firstbook.org um, link that I gave you um, or when you get onto the website you can also just call the 800 number there either way and they'll be able to point you to the right thing so if you explain to them that you are working um, with the with those children they'll know how to tell you to be able to indicate that on your um, registration form yeah there's um, I went through it myself once we um, got into this, I didn't have my own account in First Book. Um, Sally yeah. did. So I set up myself one. And yeah, I remember there was, um, there's just like a, like a pull down menu listing. Here's all the different ways you could potentially be connected to something. Pick which mm -hmm. one is most appropriate for your library. So mm -hmm. um, once you do get into that registration, um, the joining First Book, you'll see all the different, all the options, and it should be easy for you to find the one that applies to you as, as a library work that has a school with them and the Head Start programs that um, make the children coming into your library the, the eligible. Yeah, the eligible component. Yep, perfect. Library eligible, yeah. So I'm glad you said that about more than one person from an organization should join because now, yes, is in two, and she had that. Yeah, because. Yeah, if we have if we have regional funding. If we have somebody that says, "Hey, I'm really, you know, I want to get behind Nebraska or a city in Nebraska or whatever it might be," um, then and they want to say, you know, we have X number of dollars of funding in the form of twenty five dollar credits, first come, first serve. That could go to multiple individuals within your organization. So the the way to really sort of maximize that is to have as many folks as possible be able to um, get access to it. All right, anybody have any other questions? Go ahead and type in your questions and let us uh, know anything you need to know. Um, let's, um, I want to show the website that we have set up for it. Um, do you want me to do that, Bonnie? I can pull back control to my screen or? That would be great. Yep. No problem. We'll do that here. I did want to say, Bonnie, as, as well as the help um, email and, and the 800 number, if people have questions specifically about things that you talked about during this webinar, is it okay if they email you with the email address you put up on the screen there and ask you it their is. question? Yep, it is. Um, like I said, there if there are questions specifically about registration, their best bet is going to be to go through that help one because that's their area of expertise. But any other questions that pop up that might have to um, be outside of that realm, please feel free to use my email. Thank you. All right. All right, so this is the Library Commission website, which hopefully people are familiar with. Um, and down here on the side, we have a link to everything that's grant related that we do here. And we have put the Books of Kids Learning Initiative here as an option. Um, you can also type in um, our cracked uh, computer team has, oops, you type oh, there, we have type books. books. And you'll see as soon as you just type in books, it comes up as an option. and then it will bring you to our um, information about it. But then here is the main page for the um, the grant. And this is the information that's out on all everything that we have sharing um, about the, the um, when we announced it and when um, we put out about this uh, webinar and everything. Um, this link here, which right now is for signing up for today's show, will switch over 
uh, hopefully by the end of the day today, as long as it all processes quickly enough to being a the recording of the webinar that we're doing right now. So if you um, need to rewatch, re-listen to something, um, or if you um, another have librarian someone else, you know, yeah, yeah, who you want to have listen to the information, that'll be the link there. So we just have our basic info here about the grant, what we got, um, some tips about how much it is. Um, as Bonnie said, these are really good deals. These are like good books at a huge discount, 50 to 90 percent off. So you're only paying about 350 on average per book or ebook, um, and free shipping if you get 25 dollars or more. Yep. So keep buying and putting things in your cart. Um, yeah. And here is the basic steps for um, participating. Actually, uh, it, it, um, you reg it's a two forms to fill out really. One, register in the first book marketplace on, on what we were just talking about. And if you're already registered in there, you don't have to be new, a new person to participate in our grant. You can already have potentially be buying from there and using it. You're still eligible. Um, if you already have an account in first book marketplace, just skip to step two. Um, so you sign up with first book and then you have to fill out this contact form which is a G, uh, Google form that we set up here at the commission, just for you to tell me and Sally, I am interested in getting these um, one of these gift certificates. Um, all we need is your name, email address, and institution, and then we send off a spreadsheet to Bonnie on a regular basis, letting her know, and then they issue you the um, gift certificates. Um, once you have that, you go back into your account and start buying things. Yay! So that's really it. And we just keep going until um, we've used up all the money. <laughs> um, or until 20th. we reach March 15th. <laughs> yes, or, or oh, yeah, um, March 15th, yeah. And um, we have $20,000, so if um, anyone's got any, we're starting out, we're not sure how many people are going to start signing up for this. Um, since we haven't had this webinar yet, it had started a little slow, which is what we expected. Um, so um, after this is done, I'm sure, sure we'll have a huge, hopefully much more response. Hope so. yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll start giving out um, some of the credits to start with. And if it gets close to that, like March 15th date, yes, we will be contacting anyone who hasn't used up their money. And if there's still money left that we have not distributed out, um, we will, we're going to be got more. You're going to see lots of reminders about this over between now and, and that March 15th date, um, almost weekly or more to let people know, sign up, do this. This is a very short time frame we've got for this. Uh, so you need to get in there. Um, and if there's still some money left over, we will go back to the people who've already signed up and start um, adding some more money to your um, certificates. The point is to get that all of that $28,000 out there um, to people. Well, we really hope a lot of people sign up for First Book because that's what First Book wants. And also, it's a good access point for many libraries and head starts and schools to have another access point for affordable books. So please sign up. Mm -hmm. And you know, this grant is, as we said, just for the books and ebooks. But all the other things that are in here afterwards are so great for um, supplies and materials and things that you can use in your school and your library. Um, I mean things. I mean things like this: scissors and clothing. And I mean it's there's games. There's I don't know some of the things that you've seen on here, Sally. She's got more experience with it. <laughs> so um, you know, get in the door by getting yep. these free books and then start exploring everything else. Yeah, and keeping in mind that you know we. We use the same you know, principles with, with everything um, that we put onto this marketplace. So not only books, but you know the resources that we put up there. We, um, we've built these relationships with vendors as well, the same way that we've built them with our publishers. We let them know um, what our membership is telling us, what the teachers are telling us that they need, um, and the price point. And we work hard to negotiate that so that we're able to then offer that back to you all at that at that price point. Um, so again, it, you are hopefully going to be finding things um, you know that are relevant, um, that are current, um, and all of those things. And then again, the basic needs is um, is a section to explore too, and it's oftentimes overlooked as an area um, where folks need to. Um, have those resources on hand. Um, you know, we're really focused on literacy, and we oftentimes forget that in order to be able to, <laughs> for a child to focus um, on those things, they need their, they need to, we need to be sure that their basic needs are being so. Um, so it's all tied in together. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
So yeah, the registration is here. I'm not sure. I don't think. Yep. Yeah, you just go right here, click here to join, and it'll start taking you through those steps. Um, just like she was talking about, um, of how you there's more information on their page about eligibility. Um, but really, I would recommend just go in, just start signing up and answering the questions and choosing from there. It's, um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Very, very, yeah. Pretty user-friendly. Yeah, very forgiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so step one, do that. Step two, do our Google form. And then um, it says maybe at least 48 hours. It depends on how quickly, you know, I get a spreadsheet, you know, things together to Bonnie, and then, you know, she gets it out to you, to their people. So it's usually a pretty quick turnaround. It is, yeah. Not bad. All right. Sounds anything good. else? Any questions? Gotten most of our questions answered. Anybody have any other um, last minute questions? Um, when the recording is available and ready for this, um, I'll email all of you guys, all of you who are here today, um, um, signed in, and anyone who registered. We have a few people who uh, signed up and didn't make it this afternoon, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll send you all an email letting you know when we post it up there. We'll blast it out on all of our social media and our and our and our blog and the usual mailing list and everything so you know um, is out there. Great. Thank you again for joining. I'm really, really glad to see that we had so many folks on. Um, and uh, like I said, happy to answer any questions. Don't hesitate to shoot me an email if anything comes up. And um, I look forward to um, hearing the stories back. Yeah, yeah, we we're very excited about this grant. I mean, when Sally first brought it to me last year when we applied, we were like, "Well, this sounds like such a big deal. Can can we can we do this?" And you know what? We do. We have all the connections. We have all the ways of sharing this out, and we will just push, push. And that's what we do good here. I think at the commission, one of the good things we do is promote. <laughs> so yeah. we're we're thrilled to receive it. Um, and it's it's a great resource. Um, as I know, Sally's a, a compelling meeting. story. Yeah, for years. So um. We're, we're really happy about it and, um, you know, very grateful to get this. Read Aloud Nebraska yeah, we out to their list um, about this webinar, so I was very happy uh -huh, about that. Great, yes. Um, so they're one of our other Partners. ways of connecting mm -hmm. beyond our email list. So mm -hmm. it helps to have it go out in different ways, like you said. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Great. Well, thank right. you all again. Yeah. Any other last minute questions? You'll just say thank you very much. So, yeah. All right. So, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And um, sign up. Get on. Get uh, sign up for the marketplace. Send your info to our Google form, and we'll start getting those gift certificates out. You to start buying your books and ebooks. Take care, everybody. Good luck. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.